Lakshman Ganta current myself Lakshman Ganta I'm currently working as a technology lead in Broadridge Financial Solutions. I have six plus years of experience into RPA, UiPath, and overall eight years in IT, IT industry. And I received the MVP award for 2022 and 23, and also received 14 community awards from the UiPath as active member in the community forum. Yeah, Mud, you can start, you can introduce yourself. Okay, thank you. Uh, myself, L. Mud Krishna, started my journey as a software in, intern in the distro, Hyderabad. Then later I worked for a company called Innovise. I've started there also as a robotic process automation uh, developer. Uh, I have total years of almost four five years. And then within that five years, I have made projects including uh, different domains like finance, healthcare, manufacturing, logistics, etc. And then currently, uh, currently I'm associated with uh, 4VR. It's an automobile in, uh, automobile industry. Uh, it generates the car parts. Uh, the, I think. If we use Hyundai or BMW, Audi, uh, at least one part will be from Favia. And I, I'm a technical lead for uh, AML RPA. Then also I'm an MVP for 2022. And then I've received the uh, UAPAT Community Trainer uh, certification for uh, one of the event that I did for UAPAT uh, called non one. So that is pretty about myself. Then uh, regarding the use case, so today we'll be discussing about the API integration. How do we integrate uh, an API from Studio Web? And then a high level overview of API calls, like what is an API? And then how do you call API from Studio Web? What activities that we are using? And then how do we handle uh, exceptions? And then um, for what will be the final output? And then I'll be explaining what, what the output is. And then we, I'll show you the uh, walkthrough of that. And then Lakshman will take over with uh, chat GPT and then use case demo. Okay. So the, this use case mainly involves uh, the process of uh, finding college college names based on the specific criteria using a college. Uh, I mean, uh, we have a, a general uh, college API, uh, which, which is uh, which is open for all. If you want to try, I can share you the link also. So we give the college name, uh, for example, no, no, not the college name, sorry. Uh, we give the country name. For example, if I give India, it will call, uh, the Studio Web will directly call that API with the country name and then it will generate results and then that results will be um, showing in the uh, in our studio web uh, right side output pane so that is the overall view of uh, this use case it can be uh, it can be it can be scalable i mean if you want to uh, i mean if you want to do it more you can uh, use that api and then you can even filter more with the uh, states like for example currently i'm giving only one input like country you can uh, further improve that with uh, giving uh, maybe a district name for example if you want to uh, see college names from tirupati i can give india and then tirupati and then uh, the api call will return only that specific uh, college names so it can be scalable if you want to can try so now what is an api so API is a publication application programming interface. It is a set of rules and protocols allows different software applications to communicate. So what does that mean? So we have two ways of interacting with an application. One will be direct interaction so that you can uh, you, uh, you can directly interact with that UI and one with the backend. So you can directly interact with the backend. So how do we interact with the backend? By using API call. So why is it important? to make structured communications and then efficient com communications. And there are more importance. I have uh, mentioned only the main ones. So it will provide a structured and standardized uh, out uh, output, like uh, a lightweight output called JSON. So if you if you remember previously, the data was, uh, so the data exchange was becoming, become very, um, I mean, uh, even because of the size, uh, the exchange was like uh, too tough. For example, if you want to exchange uh, the same data, within a video or audio or a text file, it will be larger size. So efficient way will be converting that entire data into a JSON array, JavaScript object notation array with, within key value pairs. And then that key value pairs will be deserialized later using some uh, deserialized uh, I mean, uh, JSON activities that, that are already present. So using those activities, we, we deserialize that and then we use it in the, uh, I mean, wherever we need in whatever way we want and efficiency. So that the data exchange will be faster and then uh, transferring instead of uh, entire data sets and files, as I, as I told already, it is easier to directly contact the 
uh, application from the back end and then get the lightweight data called json and then use that json to decentralize and then use it later so that's an overview of uh, entire api calls now i'll show you the simple um, demo You can see my screen, right, uh, Lakshman? Yes, Madhu, we can see our screen. So this is the API I'm, what I'm, uh, I'm talking, talking about, uh, universities.hippolabs. Uh, if I just paste it and then if I change the name here to China, maybe. Maybe China is a bad example. Let's make it uh, England, maybe. If the country, if it have the uh, result of the country, since England is not a country, it, it says empty. So if I give, if I give any other country, USA. For USA also, it is not giving because the country name might be different. If I give India, it gives the results. So these are the college names that are available in India. So now we contact this, we call this API. And then we extract these results from ChatGPT. Sorry, from Studio Web. Sorry. It's, um, so you have to sign into cloud. I mean, uh, cloud.eapath.com. And under that, you can see Studio Web here. And just click on this grid symbol. And then you see Studio Web here. This is the Studio Web. Click on that. It will open. By default, it will be opening templates. Here, see, you, you can see all the templates that are already available and then projects. So here you can start creating a new project. You can pick, uh, import an existing project, but uh, in our case, we are starting from scratch. If you want to use existing template, you can directly start from here. This is not like starting, starting from scratch. So to start from scratch, you have to create a new project, clicking on new project, give a, give a meaningful name, maybe college names by country. Give a detailed description, making an API call, extract the college names. So there are two waves of starting the uh, three waves uh, to start the automation manually, event based and time based. If time based, it will be like uh, you schedule for a certain time and then it will start, it will automatically start. Event based are something that uh, triggers when an event occurred. For example, if you want to um, start the automation when an email is received to, to a mailbox so that those kind of things you can choose event based now i'll be after doing the um, development i'll be manually starting it so i'll, I'll select manually and click on create it created first thing is we have to call this api so for that uh, this this thing this this thing will be a variable so we have to give that as a variable so i'm selecting a set variable activity so this activity is used to set a value so he um by default i'm keeping india and then i'm clicking here to choose a create a variable the, here there is one way and then if you want to uh, create a global variable variable and then if you want to manage all the variables in single place we have something called data manager here you can create global variables click on plus str country name so this will be the format of this variable here a string is called as text default value i'm leaving it as it is and then scope will be global click on create so now it created the global variable called str country name use that variable str country name and india will be assigned to country name so now we created the country name and then now we have to call this api using this variable for that, we have an activity called HTTP request. HTTP request, uh, if you are already a developer, um, you might have already aware of what HTTP request done with Studio. We have uh, these 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 methods called get head um, merge options patch delete. Now we since we are getting the data from that API, we use get method. Enter the URL. 
first uh, let's see what this entire result gives and then later we can assign the variable paste the entire text here if i just paste it it will automatically take you don't have to put the double quotes there and then um so these uh, we just give the url and then we see what the output is so these are just just leave them leave them uh, as it is because we don't use them and then these will be the output so http request response content all the response from that api will be stored in this response content let's print that and then see what it results take a log message http request response content one is enough okay now let's start the automation You see it it um, gave us the entire uh, api information so we don't need the entire information we just need the college names so firstly uh, let's change uh, the let's assign the variable that we created here just click on here and then use open expression editor from here we have to use the variable if you do the control press just like how we do in studio it will generate the possible variables like intelligence and then we assign this variable and now let's change this to china and then let's run yeah it retrieved for the country china let's keep it back in india and then now we have this result and from here we have to extract only the college name let's comment this so there are two types of uh, deserializations one is directly deserializing the json which will be in direct json so direct json is in, it will be like uh, two curly braces so if you see here you can see one array uh, array base and then second one is curly braces I mean square braces and then curly braces so that is called json array i mean it's an array it's not a direct json so if you use there will be two kind of deserializations if you directly use deserialized json it will throw an error let me see can just show you if you use this if i click on run it will throw an error call telling it is a json array and it is not a compatible type so it can't convert it can't deserialize so this will not work here just click on stop and let's remove this so the activity will be deserialize json array so here you can directly pass the output http request and response content now this result will be show, stored in deserialized json array json array so this here the output will be stored let's print that uh, result now there will be um, an interesting part so in general if you are in studio if you want to print elements from this json array we have to manually drag for each and then within that we have to mention this JS, uh, keep this json array and then inside the log message you have to mention that uh, J, this this uh, whatever element we used for um, looping uh, looping element uh, for example for i equal to 0 to some n uh, json array that i has to be used in log message to print the content of that array but what studio web does if you just use a log message and then give the json array within that it will automatically populate you uh, for each loop also so you don't have to do anything manually i'll just use a log message here visualize json array json array. then now it automatically populates the for each loop and then key and everything for you see so this is the one of the um, interesting part of studio studio web so now it will directly print the j token which means uh, each element of this array that we saw just now uh, a output of that uh, api it will print each element so they, there are a lot of content i mean i think 
there are a lot of colleges in our country so it will print each college now i'll show you like how do, how you can directly reduce without using any external variable like um, use a uh, normally if you want to limit the number of elements to print we use another variable and then we increase the count like uh, if you want to print top 20 colleges we just give i equal to uh, 0 and then we keep on increase and then if i equal to 20 then stop so that is also not required i'll show you now i'm just running the bot yeah so there are a lot of colleges if i keep it like this it will fail <clears throat> i stopped it because there are a lot of colleges and it will print each element so now how do we limit to print only top 20 just click on show additional options you will see a lot of options you don't have to use a if condition also there is a condition um, option within the for each itself i'll just mention it as 20 max 20 iterations to 20 and then i'll run now and then now it will print only 20 colleges so these are the top 20 colleges and now i don't need all this information i just need the college name which is this one under name so i'll just copy this name then i'll go here open in expression editor inside this expansion not this or else let's leave it and see what happens I just mentioned name now. It should print only the college name. Yeah, it just printed only the college names. So yeah, so this is how you extract the um, you, this is how you make the API calls to the external applications. If you have these are this is the open API, so that's why I didn't use any. I I, I don't have to use any authentication or something. If that it have any authentication, like uh, how the like, next use case will be, it will be uh, since it is chat GPT, it might need some authentication, which Lakshman next Lakshman will explain. So this is how you do. Now uh, let's let's um, we just created the flow. Now we will uh, do some exception handling. So if I give any other name, since it is not a country name, let's see what will it or it will result. It just started and ended with zero names. So this case is automatically solved. Now let's keep India, and then let's change this URL with something else. Sometimes this URL might be down, so we can't recreate that situation. So I'm just giving the random name here and then. running the bot now let's see the http request call should fail it didn't fail it it might have maybe it tried to call but uh, it it is automatically telling that we don't have any information let's create this somewhere here maybe inside the exception editor expression editor let's keep some other key and this is working fine skip the deserialize json and this 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 one will definitely throw an error i'm just recreating uh, some error to just show you how exceptions should be handled this one throat and error and then it, it it went to stop so now for just like how we have a uh, try catch uh, in studio we have try catch here also so it's for try catch it is not meaningful name i mean maybe it is meaningful for developer but an external user can't understand what this expression exception message is so i'm just keeping this in try just like how we do in studio and the inside here i'm just pasting a log message telling that couldn't deserialize the output 
from API. I'll start. It stopped here. If I click on continue, it will mention couldn't de deserialize the output from the API. Since I clicked on here, maybe once you publish, uh, this message will be gone and then it, you will directly see couldn't de deserialize the output. So that's how you uh, you manage the exceptions in Studio Web. And I think, yeah, uh, once you're done with this, you just click on publish. Everything is fine orchestrate to orchestrate a personal workspace feed. This will show you, I mean, this will be available for all. So click on publish. And then automation publish is queued. So now let's get back to the automations here. And then here you can run anytime when you need. So I just click on run, it will run. And then one more advantage is if you have UI automation, it will run in the uh, live stream. So that is one of the important uh, update for Studio Web. Uh, you can see it live stream, whatever running it is. And if it is running later time, or when you are not there, it will record the session and then it will give you the recorded uh, recorded thing within that run. I think I don't have any license or something, so that's it, it is still pending. Yeah, it is done, I guess. Yeah, so that's how you um, create the project and then publish and then run and then see the uh, run logs or if it is your automation, the run recording. Okay, uh, so for any questions, I'll maybe I'll check the chat and I'll hand over to Lakshman. You can continue, Lakshman. I'll stop the share. Thanks, Mugdu. Let me share my screen. Let me know once my screen is visible to you. It is visible, Lakshman. Yeah, hi everyone. Today I'm showing the one interesting use case like uh, a based screen resuming. So hope you all know that in every organization there will be HR department will be there. Whether it is small scale industry or large scale industry, there definitely there will be HR team will be there. They will, know, they will do multiple activities like recruitment, performance management, employee engagement, and so many things they will do. So the recruitment will be like some time-based, time-consuming and resource sensitive because it is a repetitive task, tedious task for the every HR because we need to download the resumes from the email or anywhere, and we need to check whether the whether the candidate is suitable for the position or not. If it is, if the candidate is suitable, they will schedule the interviews and everything. They will offer if they ever candidate cleared all the rounds they will generate the offers so there will be recruitment team uh, involve many team many th time consuming basis and everything so if we are using this a based solution ua rpa and ua so it will uh, definitely it will save some time to for all the hrs so, so it will uh, bot will check for the resumes it will based on some keywords is existing in the resume or not if it is existing if the candidate is suitable they will go ahead and they will schedule the interviews. If the candidate is not suitable, just simply they will send a reply to that email like you are not suitable, like that. So uh, I'm showing this use case today. Before going into the demo, uh, let me explain you the to be workflow. This is the to be workflow for the bot process. First bot will read the emails from the inbox. If we, whether it is today I'm showing in the Gmail, but in the organization, some people will use Outlook and also it will read from the particular email source. Once the email is read, then bot will check whether it is contains any attachment or not. So then it will download that file. If it is a PDF file in the today's demo, I'm showing the PDF file. So if it is a not PDF file, it will send some email, some failed messages and all. If it is PDF file, it will download that email and it will upload into the Google Drive. From there, it will pick the file and it will read it. Then I'm using short GPT to check the whether the candidate is suitable for the particular position or not. If the candidate is shortlisted, uh, so I, then it will send a mail to the HR team and the candidate, uh, like uh, next uh, coming up, you will receive the emails for the next schedules and all. If the ca candidate is not suitable for the particular position, it will send the uh, email to the only candidate only. And that emails will be moved to the, some other folder. 
so in this uh, in this use case i am using the these are the applications one is studio web i am today i am integrating this uh, studio web with the three applications like gmail google drive and open ai and also i am using pdf to read the the resume data so hope you all know about the studio interface what is the use of each screen and all right this uh, each tab and all so first to before going to the as i mentioned in the applications i am integrating the ui power studio with the three applications three external applications one is gmail google drive and open ai yeah first before going that one first i will integrate all i will uh, i am integrate all those services let me start one by one services integration if you want to integrate any of the services you need to go into the integration services then you will land up in the connector space here you want to integrate which are the services you want to integrate I, here as i mentioned i am using three applications i am integrating one by one service and first service is called gmail i am integrating so we'll search for gmail then we'll click on gmail then we'll click on add connection so it is asking the i am clicking on the connect so i am selecting here my email address which to which account you want to integrate that one so it will ask for the some permissions if you want to provide it to the ui path or not so i am giving the permissions and all i am clicking on continue now we can see one integration is connected and the status we can see successful it is now i am integrating second service is called google drive so i am clicking on again add connection i'm coming back to the again connector space i'm searching for drive so google drive you can see it right i'm using the google drive as a part of this one of the integration service so i'm clicking on again i'm doing the same same steps we need to perform whichever connection you want to click you need to select that one click on add connection so here again we need to give the permission to the google drive so that then only ui path can access the google drive and all if you go to the connectors which are which are your ui path is currently integrated you can find it under connections as of now i did for two integrations one is gmail and google drive i need one more called uh, open ai it is for chat gpt let me search for open ai here you can see two things are there open ai one is microsoft one one is other open ai i am using the second one this is for chat gpt again here we need to click on the add connection see here it is asking for the api key for that you need to create an account in the chat gpt screen there you will find the key id so i'm going i already created the chat gpt account so i'm pasting that open ai key here so i pasted that api key and then i'm clicking on connect so now you can see connection status is successful let me go to the connectors connection space now as per this use case we, as i mentioned i am using three connectors right so i integrated all those things so you can see connection status also successful if you want to edit the connection if you want to do any changes you can do those things and also here if you just click on the three dots at the end for the particular connection you will find all the options checking the connection status if you want to do any modifications you can click on edit connection if you want to do create any trigger for that one we can click on manage triggers and we can go that one so now i created all the three connectors as per our as per the today's use case now i am going back to the studio web so if you want to create any new project if you want to create anything from the scratch template then we can go to the template we can select it if you want to do, build it from the scratch we can click on the new project here we can give it the name so i am giving the name like chat gpt resume screening
description will be the optional if you want you can give it so i am giving chat gpt for resume screening now the question is now how to start the automation how you want to trigger the particular process we have three options manually event based or time based if it is manually means someone has to manually trigger the bot if it is an event based so if particular any of the email is coming to the email box then you want to trigger then we'll go with the event based time based will be like if you want to schedule it for a particular time let's say you want to run the bot every monday 5 pm so you can go to the time based we can give the all the timings and all and uh, as of now i'm giving manual only if you want you later once you created the project also you can convert to the any time trigger option See now here we created the manual trigger, right? If you want later, we can convert to the either of the one, either the event based trigger or time based. If you don't know at while creating the process, you don't know which trigger you want, you can select either of the one. Once you the finalized end, then you can easily convert to the as per our required, as per our requirement. This is one of the future in the UIPA Studio web. So now we got the trick, we created that one. Now first step is like, as I mentioned in the to be workflow, first we need to read the email. So we need to, for reading the email, we have an activity, get newest email. We have activity called get newest. It will be under Google workspace. So I'm clicking on that e email activity. So now it is installing the packages. It will be auto managed. We no need to install anything. So as I earlier, I created the connection, right? So by default, it picked my account. If you want to create the any new thing, you can click on the settings. You can, if you want to, if you want to use the any of the other connection, the existing one, then you can click on add new connection. So I am using the my account only. So I'm mentioning here that one. Now I'm from which email folder you want to read that one. So I'm giving the inbox folder. So that emails I want to read the emails from the inbox folder. So I'm selecting the inbox folder. I'm clicking on save. Let I will show you some of the additional properties also. We have few additional properties also. Let me go to the options one by one. Here, uh, unread only. So you want to read only unread images. If you want to read only unread images, uh, unread emails, then you click, click on the true value. So here we want to read the, we are planning to read the resumes, right? So there should be some attachment will be there. So we want, so I am selecting the with attachments only. So then bot will read only whichever the emails is contains particular attachment, then only it will read that one. If the email doesn't contain any attachment, doesn't contain any attachment, it will skip that one. Then some, some more options like important only. These are the optional things. If you want, you can check, select all those things. Once the email is processing, whether you want to mark as red or if you want to read, then we click on true. Else uh, we can select the false. So in the inbox, we may HR team may receive uh, HR, but the email box will be same for all the HR. So, so if they want to filter any of the emails, they, so because they receive multiple emails right in a day. So if they want to look for a particular email with the subjects, we have so many filter options are available with the BCC and has the words categories and particular time you want to receive and attachment name. If the attachment name contains so and so name, then only those mails only you want to read. So we have so many options are there in that one. So here I am selecting the filter option like subject. If subject here, we have the options like contains doesn't contain. So I'm using the contains. So subject contains particular I'm looking, I'm giving the UI path developer here. So I'm, I want to filter the, I want to read the emails like with sub particular subject contains UiPath developer. Only those emails only I want to read. So I'm giving that filter option. Then we'll click on save. Now email is read. Now we want to save into one variable, right? So now we read the emails. If you want to use it for the latter purpose, we need to save into first one variable first. So I'm clicking on the here we can see if you are not selecting this option we need to use it but better to use uh, some variables here so here we have if you click on plus symbol we have two options use variable and save as variable so i don't have any existing variables so i'm i want to create the new one we have two options either you can go with the save as variable and you can create the new variable or here we have data manager from there also you can pick any of the variable and you can assign it there so I don't have any variable. So I'm going to the save as variable and I'm giving some name here. So received email. 
and the scope is global and type what type of variable it is here you no need to select anything as per the activity ui path automatically will detect that required type here so i'm clicking on create now now we received the emails now we want to download the attachment from the email that will be the second step so i'm clicking on add activity see download email attachments we have an activity so i am using this activity first we read the email now we want to download the download that attachment from the email so here uh, that email account will be by default whichever account we integrated that account will come here now the email so earlier we created one variable right in the get newest email so we need to give that input here if see here if you have an options it will be show so now we click on this expand you can see received email that is the previous activity output. So I'm passing that output to here as input. And if you want to give any apply any filters, so, so there will let's say that a, a email contains multiple attachments. So based on the file name you want to filter, you can give those names. So I'm keeping I'm not keeping it blank only I exclude inline attachments inline attachments is nothing but sometimes in the email body itself only we, sometimes they will do attachments. So, so I'm keeping as false means it will it won't pick those attachments and all. So now download that attachment uh, list. So I'm again I'm giving one more variable here. Download email attachment I'm giving. So required type automatically it will detect just you need to give the variable name no need to do any changes and all just give the name and then click on create. So now first step we we read the email then the second step is we are downloading the email attachments. Now we need to upload into particular source the later they can refer let's say if the particular uh, candidate is shortlisted so they need to look into that email uh, that resume content so so i'm as of now i'm uploading into the google drive so next step will be like uploading into the google drive so i'm clicking on here add activity and upload attachment you, you can see here right one activity called upload files whatever the email attachment we downloaded from the email that one i am uploading into the google drive so here we can give the option like whatever the attachment name we gave right so we can go download email attachment so here you can see download email attachment there we have three options are there use first item of the download attachment list if you iterate over let's if we have multiple attachments are there it will iterate but in the that is this is one of the uh, great feature in the ui Power studio web here if you click on this it will automatically will pick the for each loop and all and it will iterate all the attachments if you want to take only first uh, attachment then we can click on the first one use download attachment list so I, I here i want to read only one attachment only from that email so i'm selecting the first option here so I'm uploading whatever the file I'm downloading download at the variable name dot first star default. So it will take only first attachment only it will upload. Now we need to select the destination folder in which folder you want to upload in the Google Drive. Here I already created one folder call in my Google Drive. I created one folder called RPA resumes. Here I will upload those attachments, whatever I download from the email. So here I have as I already created that folder. So I'm clicking on my drive. I'm double clicking on it. So here it will show what are the folders are available in my Google Drive. It will list down all those things. So here I want I am I want to upload the file to the RPA resumes. So I'm selecting that folder, clicking on save. We have few more additional options also we have available. We'll see those options also one by one. 
here we have multiple options like uh, let's say if multiple if the same attachment is existing already in the particular folder what you want to do so it is showing some options here add as a separate file don't replace and auto rename replace so here i am selecting the replace so if the same same file already existing with the same name i am replacing that file we have other options also available don't replace auto rename if you want to rename it to some other name we can select as per that one so but here i am selecting the replace convert to google workspace file types here i am keeping uh, as it is default options only so here the next thing is first uploaded file you want to read only first uploaded file or upload file list there are two types of outputs are available here one is first uploaded file and other one is uploaded file list you want to read all the uploaded file list into you want to save into the variable or first one so i want to read whichever the first file uploaded that one only i want to save so i am clicking on again plus symbol i am saving into one variable so i am giving the name like uploaded file so now we are now third step is also done whatever the email attachment we downloaded we upload into the files now we want to read those attachments we have an activity called download email download that file whatever file previously we downloaded right? that file we need to pick it up here file to download from which folder we want to download that file so we upload into the file into the google drive rp resume is right so i am selecting that folder here okay sorry not down so here i'm using the get file get file or folder list so from which source you want to select here i'm selecting the rpa resumes so here it is showing the options like limit to first to first 200 files you want to search and what to return whether you want to return files and for we have multiple options are there what to return files files and folders and folders so here we want to retrieve only files right so i'm selecting the files option here and here also you can add uh, there will be multiple attachments will be or uploading into the same folder right if you want we can apply some filters also as per the name so let's say if you are i'm selecting the name and if it is contains so here we are downloading that attachment right so there i am giving some name download email attachment download attachment and first are default so whichever file i uploaded in the previous one the only that file only i want to download it i want to read the file 
so i am giving that name download email attachment first our default is nothing but first file earlier we saved into one name so i am taking that name here only it will download that file from the google drive now we are fetching that file is completed now we need to save into one variable that output whatever the previously download file we need to save into the one variable so let me go to the output here we have the one we need to save into one variable that way so i'm giving the name like uh, we, it is a retrieved file right so i'm giving the name like retrieved file here so now we are uploading the file and from there we are reading the file also now we need to read the content from the file whatever we got it from the previous step we'll print the file name also whatever the file name we have let me print that file name also so i'm giving log message activity if you want to print anything we have an activity called log message activity that we can use it so here we have retrieved email so here you want to first item return or here i'm iterating all the files there will be single attachment only so automatically if you'll see automatically that for each loop came here so i'm selecting the name called retrieved file and if you you want to print the date that name right so i'm giving that name here so item dot full name i'm selecting here so we can select the log level whichever you want now in the for each we are inside the for each loop now once we read the particular item now we need to read the content from the that file whatever the attachment so if you want to read any of that one we have pdf activities we have so i'm using that pf extract pdf so we have an activity called under document understanding you can see extract pdf text this activity will help us to read the data from the pdf files so here we need to give the file name so we are inside the for each loop so current uh, it will uh, retrieved item will be the like uh, array variable so it will iterate one by one and it will saved into the for each trans iteration it will be saved into the current G that that's, that is the variable name so i'm passing that variable name here here you can select for each and current uh, the drive item now we read that pdf content now we want to save into one variable right whatever we read from so i'm going to that output option now we need to save the pdf content in one variable i'm clicking on save as variable and here i'm giving the name like str resume data so we are reading the content from the particular resume right so i am giving that it is of type string variable string resume data so now we are uh, read the file now here uh, interesting thing like we are using chart gpt to analyze that file so we have activities as i earlier we installed the open ai activity right so it will uh, default it will come the two configuration you can see two activities are there generate text completion and generate chart completion so i'm using generate text completion here to compare the text that P, to analyze the pdf file here we are using the chart gpt it will analyze the pdf content so here i already configured that one so it is taking that by default one the prompt it is asking so we 
we need to pass whatever the uh, PDF content data we are saving into one variable, right? That variable we need to pass it here. And then I'm giving the uh, some. So now we pass the data. Now I asking the, now I am entering the text like is candid. Now we are giving to the chart, chart GPT like we are passing the PDF content and we are asking is the candidate is suitable for RPA UiPath developer position. Please, if it is yes, please provide the response in SR no only. If the whatever the PDF file we are uploading that resume contains, right? If the particular candidate is suitable for RPA for the developer, it will provide the response as yes. Else it will give the no. See, we are not using any coding or nothing, just one activity. And we are passing the PDF content and we are asking the question to the chart GPT. So it will it will help us to analyze the content and it will uh, give the response back to us. We have some additional options like we need to save that output into one variable, right? So I'm saving the response. So whatever the chart GPT is giving, I'm, I want we want to save into one variable. So I'm selecting save as variable. I'm saving. I'm calling the variable name as response. Type automatically by default. Uh, path will select that one default option. So I'm just I'm giving the variable name. I'm clicking on create. So now we saved into the response. Now we need, now I'm giving the if condition some act. Now we need to check the condition, whether the particular candidate is suitable. If the candidate is suitable, we'll send the interview schedule things. If the candidate is not suitable, we will reject that candidate. So I'm using the condition based here. We have if control is there. So I'm using the if, if activity here. And whatever we thought GPT gave that response, we are checking it here. So I'm giving this option. Open Express Editor. So I'm I'm giving whatever the chart GPT output variable I'm passing it here, and chart GPT output will be saved under text. So I'm saving into the text. I'm converting into the string variable. If you want to string convert any of the variable into the string, we'll use the dot to string method. So then I'm using tool over method. Just I'm converting the response into the tool over method. Then I'm using contents. So if the chart just whatever the response chart GPT is giving that one I'm converting to string, then I'm converting to the lower and I'm checking whether it contains S yes or not. If it is S yes means that candidate is suitable for the particular position. If it is giving no means it will go to the else part. So I'm giving here just till tool hour only I'm giving it. So we have so many options are available here. So I'm selecting the options like contain. Then I'm giving yes here. So now we, now we have yeah. 10 part and alt part. If the candidate is suitable for the position, what you want to perform? So here, first I'm printing that response here. So I'm just placing one log message activities to print the status. What is the chart GPT response, whether it is yes or no. So I'm just typing the response and choice. So I'm selecting the text here, response.text. We're giving the variable name is info. Once the candidate, now we want to reply to that email. If the candidate is suitable, we'll select, we'll send the email like uh, your, your profile is shortlisted. And uh, soon HR will get back to you on that for further details and all. So we want to reply to that particular email. So I'm clicking on add activity. Here we have an activity reply email. 
so we have see under we need to use the under google workspace not for the microsoft if you are using office 365 then we'll go with the office 365 outlook one here we are using the google related things so we need to undergo with google workspace reply to the email here to which email you want to reply to that email so earlier we created one variable right for the get newest email activity so for the same email only you want to give the reply so i'm going there and i'm selecting the same that way whatever variable earlier we created same variable name i'm giving here received email. and here we need to give the body of the email what you want i already typed some content here for the time being so for shortlisted candidate i'm giving this is the email body So we have multiple options like rich text, composer, insert, expression. If you want to pass any variable or so many options are there, I'm using here rich text composer and here I'm giving that email body. So this is for if the candidate is suitable for the particular position, we are sending this response. Dear candidate, congratulations, you have been shortlisted for the position. Our hiring team will contact you for further details soon. Thanks and regards hiring team I'm giving. Once I reply to that email, so we are, I will move it to the further uh, new folder because, because we are receiving all the emails in the inbox folder. Right? There will be multiple teams will be there. They will check into the same email box for the HR that group shared mailbox will be. There. So once the email is processed, we are moving into the, we need to move into some other folder that one. Here we can see options like reply to all. If you have multiple things are there, reply to all I'm giving. Saving as draft, you do, if you want to save that email as draft. No, I don't want to, I want to reply, send the email back immediately. And also along with that, we have some more options are also available, input email. And if you want to change any of the subject of the email, if left blank, it will be the original email only. If you want to uh, change the subject of that email, we can have, we have an options are available. If you want, we can use it. And recipients, if you want to include either of the one, let's say if the candidate is shortlisted, we want to include some particular HR team also, our particular team who will take the further rounds and all interview. We can include those uh, emails also to end email. So here I'm not doing anything, reply to the email. Now we want to move that email to the some different folder. So for, to move the email, we have an activity called move email activity. So again here earlier email, same email only once the email is, pro, once the reply is also done, we want to move the same email, right? So here we need to give the same, again, the same variable name. Go to the get newest email activity and received email. Now this is the thing, to which folder you want to move it. So under RPA resumes, I created two folders already. I will show you my email box. I already created two folders called shortlisted resumes, non-shortlisted. If the if the email is, uh, the candidate is suitable, then I'm moving into the shortlisted resumes folder. I already created those folders because of that reason it is showing here. I created the two labels here, you can see. Under RPA resumes, I created two labels, shortlisted and non resume Those folders it is showing here. Now the import is done. Now what if the candidate is not suitable? So for that also again, same steps I'm doing. I'm keeping one log message activity. Just print the response. Generate text completion response and the text. And log level will give. And again, same activities we are going to use. Move, reply to the email and moving the email activity. So I'm I'm selecting this. For time being, I'm just copying those email activities here from there. Just you can click on copy. Click on there and do control V. Okay, it's not coming. So I'm giving the again reply to the email. 
So I'm selecting that variable name, received email. And what is the email body we want to give it? So again, I copy and copy pasting from that one for time being. Let me show you the what I'm doing. Again, we'll click on the body of the email, rich text composer, and here we'll give the select. So uh, if the candidate is not suitable for the position, I'm, I'm sending this kind of a reply to that email. Thank you for your interest in our company. Unfortunately, we are unable to move forward with your application at this time. So I'm sending the so-and-so message and clicking on save. And reply to all. So I'm giving true, save as your draft. No, I want, we want to send the email rates. So I'm clicking on false here. So same options only available. If you want, you can. If you want to add any additional recipients, if you want to change the subject of that email, you can change it. Now that uh, once the reply email is done, we want to move that email. So again, it will be the received email. I'm select. I'm going to the get new image email activity. I'm selecting the received email and to which folder you want to move it to. So this, if the, this is for candidate not shortlisted, right? So I'm moving it to non shortlisted resumes. Now the complete flow is done. Let me go to, let me explain the flow. First we are, uh, this is the trigger, whatever, leave about this one. Now first step is we are reading, get new, first we are checking the email, email, mailbox contains any emails or not. With all the I, I applied some filtering conditions and everything, and I'm looking for the email body subject contents UiPath developer. So I then bot will only look for this UiPath developer subject sub, whether subject contains that line. It will read that email, then it will download that email attachments. Here that whatever the previous output I got, I'm passing it as input here, and I'm saving into one variable here. Down, na variable name is called download email attachment. Once the downloading is done, then I'm uploading that file to the upload files act. So here I'm attaching the first attachment I'm uploading into the RPA resumes folder. And this disabled activity is not required, so I'm removing it here. Once the file uploading is done, then we are we want to read that uh, attachment, right? So I'm going to the Google Drive. It will be under RPA resumes. So there will be under RPA resumes folder. There will be so many resumes will be there. So for the because of that reason, I'm passing one option. I'm giving one filtering conditions like so and so name. The file name contains that name. The download email attachment, whichever the previous one. I'm giving that filter option. So it will pick. It will only take that file only. So then whatever the previous output, I'm. A, it is a list of variable. List of array. List it is. So I'm iterating one by one item. I'm say it will be saved into the current Google Drive remote item. Then inside that, I'm printing the file name here. And extract PDF text. So we need to, we need to pass the file name here. The file name is saving into the current iteration. It is this variable name. So we are giving that one to extract PDF text. And output we are saving into string uh, ST, str resume data. Now we are giving this uh, to chart GPT. In chart GPT, we have two activities are the text completion and uh, chart completion. So here we are using the text completion. Whatever the previous resume data is the string variable we are passing, and we are asking the chart GPT like uh, is candidate is suitable for RP developer position. And please provide the response in either yes or no. If the candidate is suitable, provide the response yes. If it is not suitable, provide the response in no. Then we are using if condition activity. If it is yes, we are replying to that email and we are moving into some other folder, that email. Okay, this e replies came. Okay. Earlier I copy pasted, right? It copy pasted here. So I'm removing this one. It's not required. So I'm just keeping three activities called one is log message to print the status and reply to that email and moving that email to the particular folder similar way for uh, if the candidate is not suitable i'm printing the response and reply to the email and moving that email to the different folder that's it now the complete flow is gone complete flow is completed now now well, let me send one email to my email box what will happen will so i'm clicking on compose 
so in the su subject line it will look for uipath developer uipath developer so i am uipath developer position i am giving so bot will look for the whether subject contains this particular uipath developer or not so i'm giving attachment here the resume i'm uploading I, I, for test purpose i'm giving one first my rpa profile i'm giving my attachment it contains the rpa related stuff and all it's a my resume so i'm giving i send the email now to the mailbox now let me go to the my mail i stand from the other email box Um, I think uh, Lakshman having bad internet connection. Just um, two minutes, guys. We'll join back. Yes, sorry, I'm uh, network disconnected. No problem, Lakshman. You can continue. What do can you? Okay, I'm. Okay, let me share my screen. And just quickly show the uh, run output, and then we can continue with the questions. Are you able to see my screen? Muddu, can you confirm? Yes, yes, let's run. I can see. Yeah, actually, I received that email. Uh, uh, so I connected from power, uh, power disconnected. So I connected from my hotspot. So it is taking some time here. Sure, no problem. Okay, I showed that resume. Now let me run the flow manually. It's taking some time to load it. Else I can show you that attachment, whatever I received the email. Okay, let me run the flow now. Is my screen is visible to you? Yes, yes. Now we can see the um, studio web uh, screen. Okay. It is taking little time because of the internet. Yeah, actually, I connected from mobile hotspot. So it's. Uh... Okay. Now you can see I received the resume from. So I'm going, I'm running the flow now.
Actually, my studio web here due to some network issue, my studio web. Okay, yeah, process started now. Mm -hmm. See, now you can see right, uh, chart GPT, it provides the response as yes. Let me go. Now the, from this email, I sent the email. So if I, it, it replied, bought all replied to that email like, dear candidate, congratulations, you have shortlisted for the position. Now let me send you one, let me send one more email with the non-RPA profile here. Just I'm giving the name, but what we look for are UiPath developer only here. So I'm giving non RPA profile here. We'll go to the mailbox. Just me refresh. You can see that uh, that resume is uh, shortlisted, right? So it it was moved to the shortlisted resume. Now I received the new one more profile. Just the subject line. It has RPA UI path developer, but whatever the attachment I attached that one, it doesn't contain any RPA related stuff. So now let me run the bot again. We'll see what. Now you can see the response on the right hand side. It was no because it doesn't contain any RP related things. So we'll see what the bot email. You can see here. Bot replied to that email with the dear candidate. Uh, thank you for your interest in our unfortunately we are unable to move forward with our application at this time. So for both the emails it was replied if it is related. So we're not, we are not using any coding things or any keywords, nothing. Only based on the chart GPT, we are providing that one. Just we are passing the resume content. And simply I asked one question like, is candidate suitable for uh, RPA UI path developer position? Please provide the response, yes or no. So what replied? Now if we'll refresh this page, you can see one first resume was shortlisted. So it was moved to the shortlisted position. Other one is moved to the non shortlisted. Let me go to that one. See here we have two of folders already created right shortlisted resumes. So that email is moved to the shortlisted position. If the so if we can we can change it to the event based trigger also there will be no need to trigger it manually we can publish this project and we can create the event based trigger and we'll deploy the process so whenever any new email, email will come with a particular subject whatever we configured based on that it will look into that resume content and if it will 
So R G P T only will identify whether it is shortable or not. If it is shortable, it will be moved to the shortlisted. If it will not moved, it will be moved to the non shortlisted. If I'll go to the RPA resumes, let me refresh here. Those attachments will be uploaded into the RPA resumes folder. You can see two resumes is uploaded here. First one is the RPA related one. Second one is it doesn't can it is some other position Java related things. It doesn't contain any RPA related. Yeah, this is that uh, about this use case. So in this way, we can uh, save a lot of time to all the HRs and all. So then you need to do it manually, the downloading the attachments, uh, checking whether the candidate is suitable or not. Yeah. RPA has the, the capability, easily it will uh, check, download that email attachment and it will analyze whether the candidate is suitable or not. Based on that, it will uh, send that emails and all for the candidate. Okay, Lakshma. Um, okay. Uh, I'll, I'll share my screen. Um, one second. Okay, sure. Uh, thank you, Lakshman. Thank you for the session. Um, so uh, one thing, guys, um, we have a, a studio web a course that is already available in academy.webpath.com. I'll be sharing this link to you. Just uh, complete this. It will be useful. And then if you have any questions, you can go to forum. And then you can choose Studio Web under Help. You can choose Studio Web, and then you can post your questions. We'll be answering your uh, questions. And then this is our Visakhapatnam chapter. So so far we completed uh, the last two events were done, and then those recordings are also available here. You can uh, so these are the past events. You can just open, you can just click on View Details, and then you can see the recording link. This is the recording, and then the files that are used there also available in this GitHub. So you can just check here. And the, the, this is about the, um, how do you contact and then how do you um, get the recordings? And then as I already mentioned, complete this video web overview, it will be useful. Okay, let's take the questions now. Mudu, one minute. Yes, sorry guys, last minute uh, net, I'm facing some power cut uh, issue because of that network disconnected. Sorry for that one. Yeah, if you have, if you guys have any questions, so please feel to ask me. Like, uh, we have some questions, Lakshman. I'll ask one by one. Okay. So first one is um, Gajanand uh, Brijadar. Uh, he's, he's telling, uh, can we process, can't we process directly instead of uploading and downloading from Google Drive? So no, we, we can't we can't read the file directly. Either we need to upload into either storage bucket or some place we need to upload. From there we can read it. Okay. Let let me add one more point to here. See, when you are working with the studio web, right? Like just think in the perspective of like it's completely a cloud. And in case if you have a file somewhere in the cloud, and if the APIs are exposed, then you can consume it. So it's kindly uh, just think in such a way that like in case if something is open to the cloud, then that can be done with the studio web because it's because of the reason is like even the studio web came out with the cloud first automation and everything is on cloud. Yeah. So the next question is, uh, did you filter only files when you uh, yes. get the attachments? Yes, I uh, only I selected the option files only there. Okay. From the email, right? You are asking us yes. from the Google Drive. From, from the email, I think. Uh, I think he's asking like, did you apply any filter for uh, selecting the emails? Filter criteria. Yeah, I applied one filter with the sub client. Whether subject line contains UiPath developer, only those emails only bot will pick. If subject contains other than anything, it won't pick. Bot won't be triggered also. And then uh, next question is, what is the difference between both text and chat completion? So there are two activities, right? From open AI. Yes. So uh, Navya is asking the difference between the text and chat. Uh, I think the main difference is, um, so one will be like, if you, uh, the text generation will be like, if you give something and then if you left something, it will automatically, uh, it will automatically uh, take, I mean, it will automatically fill the rest of the prompt and then it will continue. And then chat completion is like the complete 
prompt has to be given for example if you if you want to type a story for upon a time and then if you just just leave it it will automatically fill the text generation will automatically fill chat completion is like if what is the weather and then it will reply you the exact answer and then uh, it like quick answers it will be that that is the main difference with respect to the um, main query i think uh, there is not there's no much difference uh, i i think so it is completely related to open ai uh, feel free to add uh, uh, lakshman or uh, patrick yeah modi answered that and then next question is if attachment is not is a non pdf format will the bot extract or not yeah as of now i am just keeping the it will download the attachment but here we don't have the activities for if you want to now as a, we are using extract pdf text activity right it will just read the pdf files if we have any other attachments like uh, word files and all we need to convert into pdf file and then we can read it else we need to use the microsoft office package there we have an activity to read the word files and all and to add to lakshman's uh, answer so the uh, currently lakshman showed you like how do you get the pdf and then read and then uh, uh, update if it is uh, suitable for rpa or not you can always edit them in coding style will be different so you can add your own try catch like if it is pdf or not if it is not pdf then trigger an email or just print a message that it is not a pdf and that will be your own style so this is how uh, uh, you do that you can do it in your own style and then uh, uh, what is the chat gpt model i replied already it is chat gpt uh, gpt3 model and then response limit um, i think it completely depends upon your chat gpt account if your account is pro or something then you don't have you will not have any response limit i think lakshman already created the connection for chat gpt so that yes. that depends on your account yeah response will be like uh, 19 20 characters only is limit mine is a normal account test account only if you are taking pro account as uh, muddu mentioned then it will give the more response than that okay. then time based could you please show this to uh, ravindra kumar is asking can you show time based i think uh, yeah maybe tomorrow's are... call uh, once the tomorrow session is done at the end we will show you that one time based one yeah today we already crossed uh, 6 o'clock it is more two minutes okay last question uh, mm-hmm. i have noticed in the code that we have downloaded and uploaded only the first attachment what if it is not resumed i think uh, as i already mentioned it completely depends on the coding how you do so currently lakshman uh, just mentioned the co- complete flow if you if these these kind of things will be like your testings i mean your test scenarios if the, if it is not attachment then what to do if it is uh, if it is a pdf and then if it is completely empty then what to do i think that will be your test cases i think that should be fine uh, if you want to add something lakshman yes we need to uh, as of now just show the successful scenarios only that negative yeah. scenarios i didn't show we need to proper ha- exception handling try catch and all those things we can add it as per our requirement so that today i want to show you just the positive scenarios so that's why i showed the success scenario only for you yeah but we can do all those ch- changes and all the, if it is not pdf file if there is no attachment or those exception handlings and all everything will be possible we can do those things and we get the code yeah it will be uploaded in the github and then we'll yeah we will the upload show. into the git repository and i will share the same link only earlier we shared the link right in the same link we can uh, you can find all the files and that link also will be uh, provided in the community page where you registered for the session right you can find the link there itself one more question apart from connector do we need to do anything to integrate chat gpt no just we need to create the connect you need to first create an account in the chat gpt once you created the account it will generate the api key that api key you need to provide in the studio web in the connections that's all you no need to do anything else okay. if you were start to write if it is expired then you have those things depends on your account itself nothing to do with the ui path just it will uh, interact with that api key and whatever the response chat gpt is giving it will uh, apply it here then uh, navya is asking can you please explain to us each of its properties for the activity being used uh, text completion okay let me share my screen one Are you able to see? 
not yet Lakshmi. How about now? Uh, no, uh, maybe uh, you can stop. I'll share. You can just explain the book. Oh, okay. Now I can see. Okay. Network is or uh, voice is little low. The error screen actually. Yeah, my said network is too weak. So. Sure, sure. So I can I'll just give the act. Can you see my screen? Yes, yes, I can. Drag and drop the chart GPT back. This one, right? Generate text. Yes, completion. generate text completion. Yes. So here, okay, you need to connect that. Okay, I don't have an API key actually. 